How's it going, people? Jeff here from Ecom Geeks. Today, we're going to be reviewing the store La Fontaine. So, let's get into it here. So there's actually a couple rookie mistakes that are going on here, so let's uh, let's get down to business. First and foremost, uh, so you don't have a favicon, you really do need that so that people know which tabs are associated with you. Uh, also, at the bottom, you still have the Powered by Shopify, that's super easy to remove, and we have a video for both those guys. Um, so let's get down into the other kind of rookie mistakes. First and foremost, your hero banner. So. Uh, sometimes it doesn't translate well to YouTube, but this this image here is very pixelated and that comes off as very unprofessional and it, it lowers people's trust in your brand. So you need to make this a, a really nice image that, that says a lot about you. So whether that's like a, you know, a group of women wearing your, your clothing or, uh, you know, simply, you know, summer design or, or something like that, it needs to be a better image. The uh, the other thing that you need to do is you have to make sure that your your header on your your hero banner um, just uh, improves upon pulling people in. I'm just going to show you the uh, the demo theme for debut just for this. So this is the the demo theme for debut, the free Shopify one of the free Shopify themes, um, and you can see you know she can bakes reimagined for the modern life. So in that one sentence, it tells me exactly what this store is about and what kind of person it's intended for which is great it's to the point it's got one person there and it's you know it it looks very stylish and whatnot so you need to make sure that your your title here uh very simply and straightforward tells people who you are and what you're about as we scroll down we start to see some issues going on here the biggest of which is your your different images here Oh man, there's a couple things. So the the dimensions are different between them, and because of that, you know things aren't lined up uh, nicely. The other thing is that you've got a lot of differences in backgrounds going on. So you know there's the the darker ones here, and then you know you have ones that are you know a little bit more lighter, which will look a little bit more professional there. It's just that these need to all be consistent. Just going to uh, another one of the uh, the Shopify demo stores, this one's from Brooklyn. Um, you can see here, if I scroll down, I mean, all these images, they take up the same amount of space. Uh, and it just, it looks so much nicer. And there's also some consistency in the background, like it's all light backgrounds. There's a couple here that are, you know, you can see a, a little bit more darkness there. But it, it really has a nice transparent background going to it. And that's how you want to organize your store. So continuing on with your homepage here, you know, you have your hero banner, featured collections, and then a little thing about the environment, and that's it. Um, normally people add way too much to their homepage. Uh, you guys are the opposite. You need to add a little bit more. Um, so you have your hero banner. Usually after that, you have, you know, your top, you know, top sellers or something like that. And then usually you have something about yourself. So Throughout this entire website, and I, I did go through it pretty thoroughly, there's nothing that tells me who you are as a brand, as a company, what you stand for, anything like that. Um, and it would be really great to have that because I, as a customer, want to understand what I'm purchasing. I mean, branding is everything. So you need to turn this into a brand and you need to let people know what you stand for, who you're selling to. And, and that sort of thing that builds up trust and rapport with the customer. So going back to uh, the demo store, uh, this one's for debut again. Uh, you know, we can see, okay, so this is our hero banner. Now this is what, you know, you're about. Um, it, it, it has an example that ties in, but it also talks a lot about who they are as a brand and, and what they stand for. Um, and then there's a little bit more about, you know, what they care about. You know, they care about luxury materials, thoughtful design, and well-crafted. They've got their featured collection there, which is just a single row, uh, as opposed to continuing down. And then you have some other things, like social proof. Uh, having social proof or, uh, you know, people responding about how awesome your store is, in incredibly useful. And, uh, yeah, I mean, like, you don't need to add any of this other stuff, but it really helps tie things together. Uh, which can help a lot. Next, if we go into your your navigation here, there's a couple things that are going on. Uh, I mean, it's good that you have home and that you have shop by collection. The thing is, it's difficult if I were a customer to try and find, let's say that I'm looking for, uh, you know, a, a jumper or, uh, 
um, a skirt or something like that, I can't simply select that from here because these are all kind of specific collections. You know, you've got your pink uh, martini collection, which has a whole bunch of different things there. And I think that, you know, it's great that you have that as a, a type of style. Um, but I would say add another menu in here. So maybe like shop by, you know, leave this as shop by collection and then maybe shop by, you know, type. There, there, there has to be a better word for that. But, you know, for example, you could have bags, you could have tops, you could have skirts, you know, and then you can filter it that other way. So you can have uh, the same product in multiple collections. That's, that's not an issue at all. And then uh, that'll allow people to be able to go directly to where they want to go. You need to make it very simple for the customer to be able to find what they are looking for. If I'm looking for a bag, I want to be able to go find a bag super quick. I don't want to have to go to, okay, well, which collection, um, you know, are there bags in? You know, I, I don't know. You know, this one is mainly focused on, on jewelry. So I, as a customer, need to be directed exactly where I want to go. And then perhaps when I'm there... Uh, you know, I might say, oh, this is kind of nice, get that, and be like, oh, well, there's other things as well, and that's how you can pull customers in to purchasing other things. But you really need to make it simple. The next thing I'd say about your navigation is that you need to have, you know, about us in there. Um, also, I don't think you need your return policy there in the header. Um, what I would do is I'd put that in the footer. But uh, you do need something like, you know, about us and, you know, the rest is the rest is probably fine. But, but you need more information there. Um, and talking about the, the footer, there is nothing there and we need to have things there. So this is the, the spot here where you want to put things like uh, return policy, terms of service or, you know, all your different policy pages, um, contact us. You, you need those filled in and you need to have those pages. Most of the policy pages can be auto-generated by Shopify. We do have a video on that, or you can look it up yourself. Um, but you do, you do need to have those pages in there. So let's go into your product pages now. So here's a good example of where you need to update your product description. Uh, there's a whole bunch of, of random information here. It's not pertinent, and it just is distracting. Um, so this information either needs to be in another paragraph or perhaps another tab. I often suggest the app uh, Tabs by Station because it's completely free and it allows you to break your, your product description into multiple different tabs that people can click on. So if they want to know more information about the different sizing and cuffs and whatnot, um, they can you know click the other link, whereas about the first one should be about the product. Next, we're going to be talking about your product images. I mentioned a little bit earlier on um, but you need to have consistency with your product images. Typically with, with fashion, you do want a, a white background. Um, none of your photos are really all that professional. Um, they're close, but they're not quite. Uh, you know, if I take, for example, these pants here, it looks like it was probably, you know, an image like this, and then they just, you know, whitened it out until it was white, but then it starts to fade away the shirt, so you can't really see it there. Um, another thing that you'll notice is that I cropped this image so that I see the product first and foremost. You know, you've got some some lovely ladies, um, you know, showing off the, the product. And it's good to have, you know, like a, a full on picture. But then after that, I want to know about the product. In some cases, it was not clear to me what you are selling unless I went into it or, you know, thoroughly read the, uh, the description as opposed to just simply viewing it and instantly knowing what you're talking about. So here's a good example. If I if I see here, I mean, we've got a model and whatnot, but I know this is about the t-shirt. If I was to see, you know, the whole model, you know, maybe it's about the, the pants or the shorts, whatever she's wearing, um, you know, and if I go into here, we have, okay, our, you know, our model image uh, video, I'm just going to ignore that because most things don't. And then it goes into, you know, details about the product, you know, so this is how the car looks with the different buttons there. Uh, taking a look at the back, it, it gives you more information about the product. Whereas a lot of your images are, are very focused on, you know, the, uh, the model and the whole picture. So, you know, after maybe this, you want it so that it's more on the product itself. So let's take a look at your overall theme. First off, I really do like your color scheme. This kind of, uh, you know, turquoise, um, you know, seafoam color. It's very nice there. Um, and it's consistent throughout your, your store, which is great. Um, so that is great. 
That being said, I'm not a huge fan of this theme, especially for fashion. Um, so to the best of my understanding, it looks like you're using the, the simple theme. I would suggest, well, debut is always, debut is my go-to. It's, it's solid and you can't go wrong with debut. It is, it is awesome. The other thing that I would suggest because you're doing fashion would be Brooklyn. Uh, Brooklyn is a very good theme at, at showing off the, the different products that you have. It has a very large hero banner, um, that, that allows you to make much more of a statement. Um, you do have to be a little bit careful because if you don't properly have your navigation as an opposing color, for example, if this background was white, it would be very difficult for me to, to actually see the navigation because it would bleed into the white background. So you, you have to be cautious of that. However, it does look very nice and uh, it can serve you well. The last thing I'm going to look at is your website SEO. And your SEO is basically how your, your website talks to Google and tells Google what you're about. Now, your, your SEO really does need to be updated. Uh, it looks like you've just left it um, just with the default where Shopify takes your product description and just uses that as an SEO so you have an SEO. You're going to want to go through your products and make sure that you have appropriate keywords in there. So there you go. That's a review of La Fontaine. Uh, I hope that helps, and I will catch you guys next time. Looking to improve your store? Hire a geek. We offer individual store optimizations, one-on-one -on -one training, as well as workshops. Check out the description below for more information.